Hello, welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see inversion of sucrose. This uh, video is based on IIT JE Advanced 2023 question, and this will also be useful for uh, UG TRB exam, wherein reactions of sucrose is being discussed. So, and also this video will be useful for anyone studying biomolecules and uh, would want to know what is inversion of sucrose. So, the question is that disaccharide X cannot be oxidized by bromine water. The acid hydrolysis of X leads to a levorotatory solution, the disaccharide X is. So, there are four options of disaccharides that are given here and uh, we have to identify which is the correct disaccharide. So, first and foremost, we must understand what is a disaccharide and uh, how disaccharides uh, will be oxidized to bromine water, what would happen when they get oxidized. And then the next reaction is acid hydrolysis of disaccharides. So, we know that hydrolysis, acid hydrolysis of disaccharides will give two monosaccharide units. If they are made up of the same monosaccharides, then you will get two same monosaccharide unit. If they are different, then each of them will be a different monosaccharide. And uh, the next point that is given is it is a lever rotatory solution. So, uh, the uh, uh, stereochemistry of the disaccharide is also an important one. So, understanding uh, the optical activity of the disaccharides also is an important entity to understand or to find the answer for this particular question. So, we will see what is a disaccharide, what, how bromine water oxidizes a disaccharide, then what will happen to a disaccharide when acid hydrolysis is done and finally, we will also see what will happen to the specific rotation of the product that is obtained. So, these are some of the things that we will see and then we will come back to the question. So, first and foremost, uh, this is a term which we all come across when we study about carbohydrates, reducing and non-reducing sugars. So, disaccharides also can be classified into reducing and non-reducing sugars. So, when we talk about reducing and non-reducing sugar, any disaccharide that can, uh, um, uh, you know, react with Tollens reagent or Fellings reagent, and uh, can itself get oxidized is called as a reducing sugar. So, a reducing sugar is one which will reduce the reagent. So, in case of Tollens reagent, Ag plus is converted to a metallic silver that is Ag uh, silver in the oxidation, zero oxidation state. Now, let us see uh, these disaccharides. So, all the disaccharides are linked by the glycosidic linkage which is this O bond. So, this glycosidic linkage is between uh, one monosaccharide unit and another monosaccharide unit. So, the monosaccharide units we know are cyclic and then the ones I am marking as asteric are the anomeric carbons in the sense they are hemiacetals which are um, joined at the anomeric carbon and these anomeric carbon are newly formed chiral carbon and they have their um, you know new OH group. So, accordingly we know they, they are either called as alpha or beta monosaccharide units. So, now uh, when we number the carbon atoms, the anomeric carbon is always given the numbering 1. So, I am numbering the carbon atoms of the carbohydrates so that we will understand what are these glycosidic linkages, how to number these glycosidic linkages. So, where in case of maltose, the glycosidic linkage is between the first carbon and the fourth carbon. So, this glycosidic linkage is called as 1 comma 4 glycosidic linkage. Similarly, when we talk about lactose, the glycosidic linkage is between again the 1 and the 4th carbon atom. So, this is also called as 1 comma 4 glycosidic linkage. So, uh, and uh, in case of uh, sucrose, we know it is 1 comma 2 glycosidic linkage. But what I would want all of us to understand here is there are uh, you know, uh, all these are uh, anomeric carbons. So, in a disaccharide, there are two anomeric carbons and in one, the glycosidic linkage is formed and another one, it is free. So, in case of maltose, we see the ones that are marked in red have the OH group that is free, which can undergo reaction. Whereas, when uh, we see the yellow color uh, carbon atoms, all these yellow car carbon atoms have their OH locked in the glycosidic linkage. In the sense, uh, they have condensed at this position and so there is no free OH. 
So the portion of the disaccharide where we have the OH group free can open into the uh, uh, you know aldehyde group. Whereas the portion where it is locked in a chemical reaction, it has formed that glycosidic linkage, it cannot open up. So any carbohydrate which has at least one of its anomeric carbon free for opening up when it is dissolved in water, then such carbohydrates are called as reducing sugars. On the other hand, if they do not have a possibility to open up like in case of sucrose. So, in sucrose, both the monosaccharide units, anomeric carbons are involved in the glycosidic linkage. And so, there is no uh, group to open up when you dissolve sucrose. So, that is why sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. So, it cannot undergo reaction of aldehydes or ketones. So, any reducing sugar has a possibility to open into an aldehyde group from its hemicetal structure and that can undergo reactions like that of an aldehyde or a if it is a keto group it will undergo reaction as that of a ketone. So, now let us take up the bromine water oxidizing agent. So, it is a very weak oxidizing agent. So, bromine water will oxidize aldehydes to acids. So, any carbohydrate that can form open up to an aldehyde group will form carboxylic acid when treated with bromine water. So, glucose will form gluconic acid. So, bromine water is a very weak, uh, sorry, weak oxidizing agent and as a result we will see it cannot oxidize fructose. So, this is a very important reagent to distinguish between an aldose and a ketose. So, it will only uh, change aldehydes to carboxylic acid. It will not undergo or it will not um, convert an alcohol to an acid also. So, it is a very weak oxidizing agent, only an aldehyde can be converted to acid. Neither an alcohol nor a ketone can undergo reaction with bromine water. So, now coming to sucrose structure, because sucrose is a non-reducing sugar and, uh, and it has its both anomeric carbon locked in the glycosidic bond, it cannot react with bromine water or it cannot react with Tollens reagent, it cannot react with Pelling's reagent because it cannot open into a open chain structure. But then there are other names to sucrose that we must know, names like cane sugar, table sugar, it has a formula C12, H22O11 and uh, what happens to sucrose when it is hydrolyzed? So, it can be hydrolyzed and it can result in glucose moiety and fructose. So, the six membered ring is the glucose moiety, the five membered ring is the fructose moiety and as I told you it is a non-reducing sugar. So, now coming to optical activity. So, sucrose is a plus sugar that is it rotates the plane polarized light to the right and how many angle it is 66.5 degree. So, this is one important parameter of sucrose. Now, what would happen when sucrose is hydrolyzed? Sucrose can be hydrolyzed either by means of an enzyme or it can be hydrolyzed by means of acid catalyst. So, chemically we can use HCl to hydrolyze sucrose. So, uh, it will be hydrolyzed to glucose and fructose. So, in, in sucrose we see the optical activity is plus 66.5. So, if I take a sucrose solution and keep it in the polarimeter, it will deflect the light and it, uh, to the right and it will be plus 66.5. Whereas, when sucrose is converted into glucose and fructose, okay, is hydrolyzed either by the enzyme invertase or by making use of chemical reagents like HCl, you get glucose and fructose. The optical rotation of pure glucose is plus 52.7 and optical rotation of plus, um, sorry, fructose is minus 92. That is why glucose is called as dextrose, fructose is called as levulose. This is another common name of glucose and fructose because um, these are uh, isomers. So, uh, because they are common isomers, uh, this is the way they are always called. And always remember fructose is the sweetest of all sugars. That is why honey is sweeter than table sugar. So, sucrose is table sugar. Honey contains predominantly fructose. And uh, because it is containing fructose, honey is sweeter. So, now the question is why is fructose present in honey? So, we know pretty well uh, honeybees when they take nectar from plants, nectar is actually 
sugar so glucose sorry not glucose sucrose so the enzyme invertase that is present in uh, the saliva of the honey bee will hydrolyze the sucrose to glucose and fructose so the honey is actually predominantly containing fructose and that is why honey is sweeter than sugar that is sucrose that is table sugar the sweetest of all sugar is fructose so when we uh, study the optical rotation of fructose we find it is minus 92 degree so it is called as levelose because it is rotating the plane polarized light to the left so now uh, all these can be done using a polarimeter in the laboratory and this hydrolysis of sucrose when we use a um, a chemical reagent or when you use an in the presence of an acid this is actually a pseudo first order reaction extensive kinetics of this reaction is popularly studied and we can study uh, the progress of the reaction and we can um, plot or um, you know graphically plot the hydrolysis of sucrose and prove that it is a pseudo first order reaction so this is a popular laboratory experiment uh, in uh, graduation studies so now coming over to uh, what happens to the net specific rotation so as we all know here it is plus 66 and so 92 minus 52 will be around minus 20 because negative value is higher uh, when it is sucrose the specific rotation is plus 62 but after hydrolysis this mixture together gluc glucose and fructose they are in equimolar proportion that is one is to one proportion so this equimolar proportion of glucose and fructose has a rotation of minus 20 degree that is 52 uh, 92 minus 52 which is around minus 20 degree so plus 66 becomes minus 20 degree so because plus 66 becomes minus 20 degree this sugar is called as uh, levo rotatory sugar and this sugar is called as invert sugar in the sense there is inversion in configuration okay so optical rotation so because a plus sugar is becoming minus sugar it this sugar this mixture which is obtained is called as invert sugar so equimolar composition of plus glucose and minus glucose is called as invert sugar so this is an important uh, identity of sucrose so sucrose is a non reducing sugar which has a dextro rotatory optical rotation but this non reducing sugar when it is treated with invertase or when it is hydrolyzed by acid it can form invert sugar which is a levo rotatory sugar and that is the reason why this process of conversion of optical rotation of sucrose to from plus to minus is called as inversion of cane sugar or inversion of sucrose as i told you cane sugar um is nothing but sugar cane sugar so all the sugars that we um use in our day to day life are from sugar cane not from any other plant sources we can get beet sugar but popularly uh, what the sh- uh, cane sugar is the one which is easily obtained and which is being used in our day to day life so now let's go back to our question so the question has four disaccharides so i talked extensively about sucrose so how do we make out which of these is sucrose so sucrose as we noticed was a carbohydrate that had a six membered and a five membered ring so in the option a and option b we see a six membered and a five membered ring and we know uh, the left side was a six membered ring the right side was a five membered ring so that is a very crude way of saying but to say specifically we should see the glycosidic linkage so whenever you have a disaccharide what we are supposed to look for first is the glycosidic linkage so first and foremost i will number the first carbon alone so that we will know that is the anomeric carbon i will put an asterisk to the anomeric carbon we know that is the first carbon likewise in b also the anomeric carbon is marked so in b you see the anomeric carbon is on the other side so here the linkage is uh, another uh, bond it is not the first carbon it is actually the fourth carbon that is being bond here so here it is the fourth carbon and the second carbon in this place it is second here it is second and one 
So in case of sucrose, we know it is 1 comma 2 glycosidic linkage. So here we are getting some other bonding. So this is not sucrose. B is not sucrose. So uh, likewise, C and D is also not sucrose. But then our question is, which cannot be oxidized by bromine water. Again, in our discussion itself, I said it's a non-reducing sugar and it cannot be oxidized by bromine water. But uh, we will look further at the other options to understand this concept better. So I said that if the anomeric carbons OH group is free, then it can be oxidized by bromine water. So let us observe the uh, carbohydrate C and carbohydrate D. So carbohydrate C is the anomeric carbons. We see there is one which is available. Likewise, in case of D, also you see here the left side, we, the, uh, the uh, anomeric carbon is on the left hand side, not on the right hand side. That is the carbon next to the oxygen atom is the anomeric carbon. So here also it is the anomeric carbon. So in all these carbohydrates, in all the four carbohydrates, we see um, only in uh, B and C, the OH group on the anomeric carbons are free, only in B and C. Whereas in case of A, they are locked in the glycosidic linkage. In case of D also, they are blocked in the glycosidic linkage. So A and D cannot be oxidized by bromine water. Similarly, uh, B and C can be oxidized by bromine water. Okay. So, this is something which we should know. Next, the acid hydrolysis of X leads to a levorotatory solution. So, only fructose is a levorotatory compound. So, we know uh, A and B will give fructose. So, definitely A and B will be levorotatory. Whereas, C and D do not have, you know, monosaccharides that are levorotatory. So, both of them will be dextrorotatory. Okay. So, now let us see each option. So, the first option is sucrose. So, sucrose is a combination of glucose and fructose and it is a non-reducing sugar because it is having both the OH groups locked in position. So, it cannot be oxidized by bromine water and we know fructose is the uh, carbohydrate, sorry, is, a, is a one of the carbohydrates and so its specific rotation on hydrolysis will be levorotatory. Now, coming to C. So, C is actually lactose because uh, it is a combination of galactose and glucose. So, if you are wondering how do I differentiate between galactose and glucose, in case of glucose, please remember um, all the OH groups will be opposite to each other. Okay. The difference between galactose and glucose is they are C4 epimers. So, only at the fourth carbon, the OH will be on top. Whereas, in uh, configuration at other carbons, the OH will be same. So, if you know the structure of glucose, you can write the structure of other carbohydrates from memory. So, in case of galactose, it is a C4 epimer. So, only there the configuration is different. So, the sugar on the left hand side is galactose. The sugar on the right hand side is glucose. And we see the galactose OH is not free, whereas the glucose OH is free. So, lactose is a reducing sugar. So, it can oxidize bromine water. So, this OH can become COOH and then its specific rotation is dextrorotatory because both the carbohydrates, both the monosaccharides are dextrorotatory monosaccharides. Next coming to the option B. Here again its hydrolysis will give fructose and glucose but then here the glycosidic linkage is 2 comma 4 not uh, 1 comma 2 and uh, so, it is a reducing sugar. So, it can oxidize bromine water, but then its specific rotation will be levorotatory. So, between these two, we see they are opposite. Both are levorotatory because their monosaccharide unit is same. So, hydrolysis will give the same carbohydrates, but then as a disaccharide, both of them are different. One is a reducing sugar, another one is a non-reducing sugar. Then coming to the option D. So, this this disaccharide is called as trihalose. So, this trihalose is a combination of two glucose units. But these glucose units are linked by 1 comma 1 glycosidic linkages. So, this 1 comma 1 glycosidic linkage blocks both the anomeric OH group in a glycosidic bond. So, it is a 
non reducing sugar and it cannot oxidize bromine water and of course its uh, specific rotation is dextro rotatory so when we compare of the four carbohydrates we see the answer is sucrose because it is a disaccharide which is having a levorotatory property on uh, hydrolysis and then it cannot undergo a reaction oxidizing reaction with bromine water because it is a non reducing sugar so this is how we come to the conclusion about uh, this uh, kind of questions thank you